What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, D Endor Commentary, trying to give me some good D Endors. And we have Endless Waltz, 1650 versus Namus, 1621. Okay, this is a, a duel between players who have pretty much equal ratings. All right, looks like um, Mass Heroes versus Unknown Deck so far. Opens up with that Monk. Oh, he's gonna. Wait, what? Oh, he's setting everything and then he's gonna special. I'm like, how did uh, how did that get on the field? I'm like, what? <laughs> All right, so he uh, obviously sets everything and then he goes for the um, the what's it called play? Okay, so he's gonna go for the special play. Looks like he's bringing out uh, Telemius and Durundle and man. You know what? We just had that in another duel, and looks like everybody's doing this play now. Okay, so he's gonna go for the Dark Law. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it was it was super OP. Like it was super ridiculous. I got hyped as freak the first time that I saw the play, but now it's like, ah, oh, okay. So it's just another really good play that here that Mass Heroes do, and it seems to be like one of the best plays too. And I might actually have to change my um Mass Hero deck to try and incorporate this play. So I wonder if. I guess it, it depends on what um, Endless Waltz's back row is. That'll determine which effect he wants to use. Because if Endless Waltz tries to set a whole bunch of monsters, then Namus will eventually this turn be like, okay, well, reshuffle your hand, and then I'm going to use Dark Law on you, and you just won't, you know, you'll, you'll end up losing a card for free. And then Dark Law will just be on the field just doing his Dark Law banish shit. Oh, we see an Infernoid Summon. Okay, so those are going to get banished regardless. Uh, keep in mind those do not start chains. And I'd have to think that this is a match that should be absolutely awful for Endless Waltz. If he loses that, um, if he loses, ah oh man, I was going to say if he loses that Stiatomus, I think he's going to lose the game. Um, I'm looking for him to automatically activate the Rundle right now. No, nah, looks like he's not going to use the Rundle. Okay. I think I would have used the Rundle's effect, but that's just me. Just to try and use Dark Law. But I guess you want to keep you want to keep the Rundle in your pocket just in case your opponent has that Torrential or that Regeki. You can make sure that um they can't do anything. And actually he can just OTK him if he plays Blade Armor Ninja. Uh, uh he can pretty much stop any one back row that he wants. Nope, he has Excalibur. That'll get the job done too. Uh keep in mind he can just special summon another bubble man from his hand. He can search a bubble man and get it and just special summon it again for 800 more damage i don't even think he'll need it um if my math serves me he has something like uh 80 800 on board something like that let's see if he has that game okay uh breakthrough skills played i actually don't think that that's gonna work because its effect has already been applied so using breakthrough skill now does not stop it like it's still 4,000 attack he uses a second breakthrough skill on Dark Law. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Um, okay, so it's gonna take 24. It's gonna take 24. Ah, oh, okay. Correct me. I guess it, I guess it does stop it. I was under the impression that it would still be 4,000 attack. Okay. My bad. Now, those two breakthrough skills are good against Dark Law, but he doesn't really have any resources to use them with. It does make the Rundle pretty much useless, though. Like, yeah, the, the Rundle is, at this point, I mean, he would need a Regeki or something. Oh, it looks like he's going to go for Burial. Probably try and summon that Stytomus right back. Uh, obviously, Decatron, not so bueno here. But if he can get the Stytomus, if he can get the Stytomus on board, and that face down card isn't anything good, Endless Waltz could actually win this game. <laughs> he could actually run this back. Looks like Namus is thinking about something. Uh, your monsters are kind of irrelevant. Looks like he's gonna activate Durundle. That's obviously gonna, Breakthrough Skill is obviously gonna do that. Uh, yeah, Breakthrough Skill is obviously just gonna negate that. Alright, and then he'll just obviously, yeah, you would just obviously chain Break, you got two Breakthrough Skills. That's why I see this duel coming down really to that face down card. It's gonna try and attack over Dark Law. Oh my goodness, the attack goes through. And he's gonna lose probably his entire field. Wow. Yeah, you go you go at the set card and the um you go at the set card too. Because you know the monsters don't do anything. Oh, it's a hero lives. And the thing is, Nami's pr 
probably is going to, like, he's hardly going to get wrecked because we know his top deck, or we know his card in hand is a Neos Alias. That can't do anything. Unless he draws, like, a Bubble Man or something. If he draws, like, a Bubble Man, that'd be awesome. No, he doesn't. And he has to put his monsters in defense mode. Oh, my God, the comebacks. Don't call it a comeback, guys. Now, the thing is, you would think, oh, I've got tons of time, but Stytemis can kill both monsters in one turn. Neo's alias is not going to get over Stytemis. Life points are largely irrelevant. And I just feel like, I feel like endless, I feel like he's, I feel like Namus has lost so much control of this duel that it wouldn't even shock me if the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! God just gave him like a reasoning as his top deck or something like that. So his, his entire field is erased. That field that he spent the entire, well, well, pretty much like, eh, first couple of turns building up. I feel that should have won the duel for him. Still leaving that, oh my goodness. An iron wall, which actually wasn't even that good in this situation, is hit with an MST. I guess he could have flipped over iron wall and it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been able to get banished. So, I guess further, like, it would have stopped further plays, but it doesn't stop the Stytemis on board, which is the real concern. Infernoids are looking really good here, man. Those breakthrough skills have been clutch, and I haven't seen a, a comeback like this in a while where one player has all the momentum, and then just with a couple of cards, it's just like, ah, it just flush down the toilet. But I, I feel like Endless still needs a follow-up play. Like, he needs to top deck a, a Charge of the Light Brigade, or obviously Reasoning would be, like, OP, but those are the two that I can think of. Or this card right here. This, this pretty much does it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Decatron is obviously looking good. But here's the issue, though. If you don't win this turn, Neos Alias could kill you, right? Should he have summoned that? I don't know. Wait, I don't know about this. Why did he summon that knowing that Neos Alias is in Namus' hand? He could just... Okay. I don't... I... What? what? He must know something that I don't. Because I don't think I would have summoned Decatron... Knowing that Neo's alias is almost certainly going to be summoned here. And he could just attack you for, like, game, right? Um, what just happens? Did he seriously not realize that Neo's alias was in his hands? Okay, I don't know why he's banishing. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. I get what, I get what happens. He, he used, what's it called? He used, um, Stytemis' effect. Okay, fair enough. My bad. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You did not just do that. So he obviously launched to banish the mass change. Okay. All right. So he had that, he had that the entire time. Now he's going to go for Onu. Um, no point of using it, its effect. All right. It has to banish Petru, but he has the monsters on board to do a lot of damage here. So that's a thousand. 3,600 total will leave Namus with about 1,100 life points. And he obviously won't be able to use one spell or trap because uh, he could just negate it by putting Stytemis in the graveyard, by tributing it. So even if he was going to top deck something really good, like a spell or trap, like a Regeki or something, he could just negate it. And if you've got any monsters, I think now is when you just set them. He sets all three cards. Okay. Let's see what's going to happen. He puts uh, only in defense mode, obviously not needing two attacks. If you're going to run into a Mirror Force, why lose both monsters, right? All right, he does He does run into a Mirror Force. Now, here's the question. Do you launch the Onu so that you can... Oh, no, nope. looks like he's just going to launch it to banish maybe Neos Alias or something like that. Shadow Miss, another good hit. So, I guess he felt like um, he could have... Uh, Onu is the one that negates spells and traps, right? Uh, yeah, he may have thought that it was too much of a risk... Um, if his opponent may have had like another follow-up card that he probably would have lost. So I, I think leaving Onu in, in defense mode is probably the better option. The chances of Namis having two mirror forces back to back were not very high. So basically he just, uh, puts it in attack mode the following turn and ends up winning the duel. And I mean, man, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is, it's like basketball, I guess. It's a, it's a game of runs and each deck had their run and the, the final run won. Thank you guys for watching as always.